welcome to today's interview. Today's interview with expert Kelly Crokin is perfect for you if you have ever felt like you get stuck in your own way when you want to grow your business, you're trying to sell something, you can't get the words out of your throat. Maybe your voice goes up a little higher when you have to say your price. Today, I'm talking to Callie, who is a business life coach. She helps entrepreneurs overcome the subconscious programming inside their heads so that they can really get the results that they're looking for, which is mostly they want to grow their business and have a life. Callie, thank you so much for being here today. I can't wait to talk about how this unconscious programming keeps us from selling our stuff and saying our prices and growing our business. So welcome, welcome, welcome. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Jen. I'm super excited to be here. I'm so glad you're here too. Tell us a little bit about your business. You know, who do you help and what problem are you solving for? Sure. So I work with entrepreneurs and what they come to me for is because they're usually stuck in their business. So they're not getting the growth that they want and they're actually not feeling the way they want to feel in their business either. So a lot of my clients are what they would describe as heart-centered entrepreneurs. So they like have the specialty, they have their business. They're usually their business right? So whether it's like a coach or a copywriter or makeup artist, like it doesn't matter, like they're their business. So they have a hard time actually with sales. So they actually have a hard time selling their products because they are the product. So that can be a very different thing from selling somebody else's product or like another object, but you're actually selling yourself, which can feel really intimidating. Mm -hmm. A lot of them feel like sales is slimy and greasy (laughs) and taking right? It's, and so it's really hard for them to do something that they're not. That's the biggest thing. It's like, we can't do things that we are not. So to understand that, it's like, well, if your identity, for example, and I have a tendency to squat, Jen, so feel free to... No, I want to hit, because liter- I was literally just going to ask you, what do you mean by we can't do things that we are not? Go ahead, go for it. So many of us are doers, right? So all my girls are like, work hard, push, strive, hustle. Like they're all about the hard work but we can't do what we're not. So if at the identity level, I am a heart center person, I care deeply, I love hard, I want to help other people. So if that's who I, I believe I am, and I think that sales are slimy and that I'm taking away from somebody else, I'm not going to do it. There's no way, right? So I might get a little traction, like I might get a little bit of some of the results, but I will never get to where I want to go because our brains will not allow us to do it. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's not about doing more. A lot of us think it's like, no, I got to be busy, 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 hustle, hustle, hustle. That'll prove my worth. But it's actually, no, I have to be the person that already has what I want. Does that make sense? It makes sense. I know that it makes sense because I've done the work. I know I've done this work. I understand what you're saying. But I think that there's people in my audience who are like, okay, fine. I understand that on an identity level, I need to become the person that I want to be. But how do I do that? So can we talk about? the how, like give us a little bit of the tools and tricks that help your clients overcome these challenges, because I know these are universal challenges. And if somebody's listening to this or watching this, I don't ever want them, don't feel bad. This is, you know, we're, we've all gone through this. That's why you and I are having this conversation, right? We actually started having this conversation in a Facebook group that we're in together, because I really wanted to talk to somebody who could help my clients overcome their subconscious deep wounds about sales. So that's why we're even here today. Okay. So it's at the identity level, it's at the subconscious level, but what the hell do we do about it? Ah, so I I think I'm going to give you a couple examples because the way I love to do it is by actually giving you, like putting you right in it. Mm -hmm. That's okay. So absolutely. let me give you a couple of ways of kind of looking at it. So Jen, if I gave you, if I said, I have a time machine and you can take it for the day, where do you want to go? Do you get to go back or forward? You get to go wherever you want to (laughs) go. That's so, that's a hard one for me because I enjoy the journey along the way. And then, but my brain goes back to, would I go back to like my childhood where I could undo an old story that I have from them? Like, and, but then how would that have changed the rest of my life? You know, would I, would I still be where I am today? That's, I think, so I probably would go back to a very seminal moment where I felt like a burden and I would, Mm -hmm. I would want to be not seen as a burden. Right. And that's beautiful. And I love that you actually, you're the first person that has actually even said, where can I go? Right. So you were even like, oh, can I go forward or go back? Like the majority of people that I've done this with are just like, I would go back here. They're like, oh, I could go forward. Like, so our brain is like, even like, oh, I didn't even think I didn't say you can only go back. I just said, where would you go? That's right. That's right. Brains are so hardwired for survival. 
right? So it's like automatically I'm going to go back. So what that shows us is that we're actually committed to the past. Oh, so our okay. brains are so committed to the past. It's like, well, I want to go fix that because I felt like a burden. Mm-hmm. So that feeling of feeling like a burden, if you don't heal that part of it, like that part of your past and that feeling, that's always going to hold you back from getting to where you want to go. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like, we're so tethered to the past. We're so tied to the past. And it's kind of like that Albert Einstein saying, right. It's like, well, doing something over and over again, expecting different results is insanity. But we do that constantly because that's how our brain is actually hardwired to operate. But we do it subconsciously is what I'm hearing you say. Like, we're not really, yeah. I so don't go back to that place where I'm a burden ever consciously. Constantly. Yes. And so that was just showed me unconsciously where you do go though. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's how we can kind of be like, okay, well, consciously you're probably like, no, I'm not a burden, but unconsciously you still are because you went right back to that place mm-hmm. like that. And the, the funny thing is in this conversation, I don't often use that word burden. Where that word came from when you asked me this question, I have no idea. That is so interesting. And that's your programming that you're running on. Okay. So, and this is really eye-opening, I think for everybody, it's like, well, oh no, <laughs> like the way our brains work. No, I'm not. I know I'm not a burden, right? It's like, no, I know that. But unconsciously that's programming you're still running on. That's amazing. Right. So, and it's, it's really interesting because you're like, what do you like, where did that even come from? But it's like unconsciously. And let me just be clear too, for people that don't even know this, it's like our conscious brain, I always go front and back. Okay. So it's like consciously, like our awareness is our conscious brain. Like what we're aware of is like 5% of our brain power. And our unconscious is like what we're not aware of, like what's underneath kind of like that iceberg is actually 95% of our brain power. So my goal and what I help my clients do is actually align our conscious brain and our unconscious brain together to actually go towards your goal because most of us are running in that 5%. And if your unconscious part of your brain is not aligned with that 5%, who do you think is going to win? Yeah, the the 95% that's, it's like an app running in the back of the phone. We don't even know it's on. Yeah. And it's like that. It's like an old computer program, right? It's like we're running on this programming from zero to seven. And we're expecting to get results of like an adult woman that wants what she wants. <laughs> right? Oh, it's you like, mean the ages of zero to seven. That's when yeah. all this subconscious programming happened. I get you. I get you. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's, let's like pull at this thread a little bit. Sure. So if burden is the thing that I went back to, this word that came from nowhere that I use nowhere else in my life, how might that affect me now as a grown ass woman who wants to sell some shit on yeah. in her business? <laughs> So if I'm thinking, okay, what what would you be selling? Say, Jen? Say I was selling like a private coaching package. Yeah. So if I really feel like I'm actually a burden and not good enough, am I really going to believe that I'm good enough to cook? Like, do you know what I mean? Is like, am I really aligned with feeling really powerful and really like amazing as a coach? Like, do I truly embody that? Or is there always that part of me that feels like I'm just not good enough? Mm, Right. Like, what if I don't show up? What if I can't get them the results? What if I can't, 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 right? It's like that tether that keeps pulling us back. No, I hear this a lot from my clients who are, you know, they've, we've worked on everything. We've designed their program. We've written the copy and then they'll kind of screw around on their sales calls. Like they'll sabotage their sales calls or they'll, they'll make their life so busy that they actually never get around to marketing to even get sales calls. Right. But it always comes down to what if I can't get my clients the results that I'm promising and I bet you see this too, because your clients are heart-centered also, right? They think that it's their job to get their clients results. Mm -hmm. That's how they think they're worthy. That's how they think they can unburden themselves, right? But we know as coaches that it's not our job to get our clients results. It's our job to help our clients get the results for themselves, like move the crap out of the way for themselves. So this, all this awareness now that you've brought to the front of our brain helps us sell better, helps us do better. Right. And that's a really good, like, I've definitely felt that way in the past. And I still have to, like, this is the thing. It's like, we're never completely free of the fear, Mm -hmm. right? It can be there. That's okay. But it's what we choose instead. Right. So we always have a choice. So what I always teach my clients in my one-on-one program is that many of us are focused on controlling outside of our circumstances, like our circumstances, rather than controlling ourselves. So if I'm, and this is actually a beautiful main strategy to say that Byron Katie actually developed. And she says, there's my business, your business, God's business. Okay. Right. And suffering actually comes from being in 
their business and God's business and not being in your own business, right? So if I'm worried and focused on my client not getting the results, I'm in their business. Like I have absolutely no control over that. I can show up and deliver the best, right? right? But unless they are willing to take responsibility for themselves, they're not going to get the results and that's out of my control. So if I'm focused on that, I can never win. Right. Right. So right. it's about changing that focus. Be, okay. Well, what's my business? If I'm showing up and doing the best I can every day and providing the service that I know is top notch, then that's my business. Their results are on them. Right. So mm-hmm. it's like they're responsible for their own results. And if your your ladies are a lot like mine, it's like we're so loving and so giving. It's like, well, I just want to, you know, like I want it more than they want it. Right. It's like I just want it so bad for them. So what we think is loving is being like, well, I'll do it for you or I'll, you know, I'll make it work for you. But what we're actually saying unconsciously to other people is that we don't think you're capable of doing it yourself. Oh my God. I love that so much. I had this moment when I was teaching at the college level, I had a group of freshmen who just, it was like I had put them in a backpack and I was dragging them up the hill all semester. And it was the end of November. The first semester was almost over. We were still talking about the most basic stuff. And I got really pissed. And I realized in that moment, and I said this to them, I'm like, you guys, I am up here tap dancing for you every single day. Like I've already been through college. I already have two master's degrees. Like I don't need to learn this anymore. You need to learn it. And if you can't learn it and it doesn't matter to you to learn it, then I can't learn it for you. And it was a huge shift because there was like this silence in the room of like, oh my God, oh my God. Like they, they realized like they had just been not putting in the work, not putting in the time, not putting in the care. And I realized that because I wanted it so badly for them that I had been overworking, overdoing. And can I challenge you on this a little bit? Cause I yeah. think like so many of us experience this. And I want to say to you, like, what did it mean about you? If they were not doing what they, that were... I wasn't a good teacher, that I was a horrible teacher, that I sucked and that I wasn't what I wasn't good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So how can you feel really like you're ever good enough? If the only way you can feel good enough is that these people get their shit done, right? It's like, I have no, con- I can never control no. feeling good enough. It's like setting yourself up for failure. If, you, oh, if your value is in how somebody else is performing. Right. Yeah. And we do it, we do it, we constantly do it. I see it. Oh, I did it constantly. I still have to catch myself, right? Like that's kids. part of it. Yeah. Like with everybody, it's like, yeah. I, and I see it in my clients. I'm like, I want it so bad for you. But I approach my clients as I see your highest potential. I'm going to take you there. Yeah. Right. So it's like, I'm never coming down to your level. You're going to come up to mine because mm-hmm. I know you're up there and more. So my goal is to bring you up, but you've got to go there. Like you can't drag people, right? It's like, it's just a lose-lose. So I think we've all learned that the hard way. Yeah. So what are some tools and what are what is like your favorite tool to teach people? So once they have this awareness that we're talking about, and maybe like this conversation is really resonating for people and people are saying, oh my God, I do this. I drag people up the hill all the time. I put my happiness in other people's outcomes. What is like your most favorite tool to do after that? There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> What I do is I, I really teach my girls or my entrepreneurs, not all girls, but mostly is to really like we're, we put our mind puts us in a box, right? So our thinking is like our box around our head. And what we want is actually outside that box, because if it wasn't outside the box, we'd already have it. <laughs> right. Right. So we have to so I teach them to think outside that box and really push them to think in a very different way. But the freedom really comes to from again, awareness, but also like, again, I, I take them through processes where they can release that energy. So I would take you, if you were my client, I would take you and I'd be like, we're going to release that burden right now. Right. So we would go through an energy session where we would release that and you could move forward. And the thing is, it's like that memory, you instantly remember the feeling and our memories are actually locked in our body. Right. So our subconscious mind is actually our body. So our memories get locked. That's why when, if you hear like, say a song from college and you're like, it brings you right back. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like instantly. So if you actually have, I had a client that, and we were talking before, it doesn't have to be a traumatic experience. It doesn't have to be like a big traumatic experience. It could be very simple of something like, oh, somebody said this to me and it meant this to me. And I, I still remember it. Still really powerful. Like this girl that I had, she's like, you know, my mom 
took her someplace. Like, and it, her mom was best of intentions, but it was how she felt about it. She's like, I can still remember the smell of that coffee in the room. Like that's how powerful it still was for her. So we just went in and released that. And she was like, <laughs> right. It's like, she's like, what is this? Right. But so another powerful one thing to, to do is to take a look at your values, Jen. So I think if I know you're, I'm thinking you're women and it, you tell me about this about you. So what do you think your highest kind of values would be? Like, what do you, what's important to you? To, what's important to me as a coach? Mm, just as a person. I think being responsible has always been an important value for me, showing up and being somebody people can trust and rely on. Okay. What happens if you can't show up at a specific time? You know, I worry that I've let somebody down. What happens to me if I've let somebody down? Is that the question? Yeah. yeah like kind of, how do you feel about it? Disappointed in myself. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like taking a look at your values and being like, okay, like committed, like responsible is an awesome value. Right. But what you want to look at is like your rules behind mm -hmm. that value. So like what has to happen in order for me to feel like I'm actually being responsible? And is it working for me? And or is it just setting me up for failure? Right. right? So so many times we're it's like we're playing this game of life. We don't know the rules. We actually don't know how to win, but we're still trying to win. Mm -hmm. And what, the people that are in our life don't know the, our rules, but we're expecting them to win too. Right. So it's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, I find a lot of people have this like freedom, like a lot of entrepreneurs value freedom, Yeah, right? They want freedom and that freedom, that value of freedom can actually be something that holds us back from actually getting what we want. So for so, example, well, like say for example, like you're saying, okay, well, they don't want, they don't, people aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Like they know what they need to do in the business. They have their strategies, but they can't seem to follow through. Right. Well, that could be because on an unconscious level, that feels like it's putting us in a box and squelching our freedom. Oh, yeah. Right. So it's like, no, actually, I my brain's like, no, I want to just be able to go for a coffee or I want to be able to do this. And so that part of our brain, that feeling of this freedom is actually stopping me from having the bigger piece of freedom. Does that make sense? It does, because a lot of my clients are highly creative women. They're not very linear in their thinking. So the number one thing I know they need is a plan. You want to put content out in the world, you need to plan. You need to batch that plan. You need to write it in advance. And the last thing that they want to do is have a plan so that they're always tethered because they're like always waking up screaming to themselves every day, shit, what do I have to do today? Because they have never planned. So they actually take away their own freedom. So I understand what you're saying a hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. So they're so like, they love the creativity and they mostly unconsciously, it's like, well, if I have that structure, then that takes away my freedom. So I'm not willing to do it no matter what. Even if consciously I want this, like I will buck that structure because I feel like it's even it's not consciously we're not thinking this, but it's like, well, that will stifle my freedom. And that's the most 100% important thing. Agree. And we yeah, know so it is, right? If so, we bring this back around to my conversation about responsibility as my number one value, of course, I'm subconsciously going to over show up, over commit, over worry, over like, you know, get in my students business when it's really their business. and. Yeah. So it's such a great lesson for me to remind myself like, oh, when I feel overworked or over invested and somebody's not showing up, I need to remember like I've done my 100%. I've shown up as much as I could have. And it could be too. It's like, well, instead of me taking that responsibility on for them, how can I hold them responsible? Right. Being like so hard on myself and worrying that I'm not doing good enough. How can I show that responsibility by holding my client responsible for their own results? Right. Right. And in a very loving way. It's yep. it's not like it's like, well, I'm being a bitch. Sorry. I don't know if you can. <laughs> oh, I, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> like, so we're so like afraid of being not liked about being judged and being rejected. Right. Because we attach so much meaning to that, that it's like, well, if I hold them responsible, they might not like me and then they might not, you know, want to work with me anymore. Yeah. But you're actually being so loving when you're able to lovingly say to that person, let's take a good look at this because it's not serving you and I'm not willing for you to keep doing it anymore. Exactly. So right? yes, this has all been so helpful. And you've given us little tools that really, we have to go inside and really ask ourselves these same questions. And I think like if anybody's listening to this, if you listened to it the first time for the information, I really encourage you to go listen to it again and put yourself in my place today because Kat, what Callie did for me today was a little bit of coaching here. And I like, I am so up for this kind of coaching. And if you can do this for yourself as you re-listen, 
I think that my audience could really get a lot out of it. So I encourage everybody to re-listen to this. But if they think too, Jen, like if they can think, okay, everything starts, starts with their thoughts. Okay. So our thoughts create everything. So it goes, thoughts lead to how I feel. Mm-hmm. Our feelings lead up to how the actions that we take mm-hmm. and the actions that we take create our results, right? So a lot of us will start with trying to do, do, do the actions, but the, it, we go right to the cause of it, which is our thoughts. Yeah. Right. And our thoughts create our beliefs, right? So all a belief is, is a, a reoccurring thought. Right. It's a thought that you don't even think anymore. It's like running in the back. It's automatic. And that's where it becomes unconscious, right? Yeah. So it's like when you're driving somewhere and you're like, oh my God, how did I get here? Like, <laughs> I don't, you know, it's like, that's what your brain is doing all the time. But you're like, you don't even know what patterns you're running anymore. Yeah. Well, so I like, think figure that out. This is so helpful. And I really encourage like this month I'm talking about how to do more selling, how to do more selling in a way that feels good to you, how to get your, how to get out of your own way. And this conversation will help you with everything in your life from relationships to where you're spending your energy, but it will definitely help you make more sales in your business because I promise there's some unconscious bullshit running. Oh my gosh. And it's fear, Jen. Like this is everything we do is to either feel something or to avoid feeling something. Right. Right. So ask if they can ask themselves, okay, well, what is it about selling that makes me afraid? It's the meaning that they're attaching to selling. The thought about it, right? Yeah. So for me, I, I, coach my clients on selling is actually serving. Mm -hmm. It's either like you are, say you as a coach. So say you get on a consultation call with one of your clients. It's like for you, what I would encourage you to say is, okay, well, either they're selling me their limitations or I'm selling them possibility. Right. So what is it going to be? Am I going to go into their fear with them or am I going to take them over into the light? Right. So it's like, no, I'm not pulling them or dragging them, but it's like, I'm going to coach you through your fear because that's the only thing that's holding you back from creating this amazing thing that you want to create. Right. So am I going to be the type of person that's willing to allow you to stay in your fear and not do those amazing things you're meant to do? Because if you're a loving person, this is how I see it. If I'm loving you hard, I don't want you to stay there. I want to take you into the light and see what you're going to do. Right. Because we all have so many amazing gifts and talents. Yeah. So that one thing is like most of my clients feel like selling is taking and they're not takers, right? right? So that at the identity, it's like that feeling of being a taker is so like, that will always stop awesome. them. Right? <laughs> right. So, and that's just attaching a meaning. So, and to kind of dig this home a little bit more. It's like, if I said to you, Jen, like, what do you think would be like the worst thing somebody could kind of say about you? Like, what would be something you'd want to avoid somebody saying about you? That I was selfish. Mm -hmm. or that I, that I was kind of full of shit that I wasn't, that I couldn't really do what I say that I can do. Right. And I wrote down like greedy and selfish. (laughs) That is like the majority of like, right. So it's like, but if I said to you, Jen, you're, you're a purple dinosaur. (laughs) You're like, whatever. Right. Like you're like, yeah. Right. right? right. So if I say to you, Grant, Jen, you're greedy and you don't know what you're talking about. How did See, I don't even know if everybody could see the way your physiology changed, like, right. So it's like, oh, so that means something to me. Mm -hmm. So that means that I'm afraid that a part of me is that person Mm -hmm. because there's not a bit of me afraid of being a purple dinosaur because I know I'm not right. 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 So once I let go of that fear that I'm greedy and I don't know what I'm talking about, I can do whatever. It's super easy for me then because I'm like, yeah, I got you. Right. Like I know I'm not one bit greedy. I know that I'm going to serve the crap out of you. And you're like, I see it as like my clients, when they sign up with me, they're winning the lottery. Mm -hmm. Like, because they're releasing themselves of all this bullshit that's been holding them back in their life. And it, it goes, it encompasses every part of their life, their relationships, how much they love themselves, like increasing their business. One of my girls went from in three months Increase her profits 400%. She's on goal to make $100,000 in four months. That's amazing. From being in debt. And yeah. this is what yeah. we did. Yeah. And she's like, everybody, and it's so easy. It's, it, she's like, why is it so easy? Now? And I'm <laughs> like, because you're releasing yourself from it, right? So many of us think that freedom actually comes from having more money. Money is just a tool. Mm-hmm. And there's so much meaning around money for people. It's insane. Yes. But money is just energy. There's no meaning to money. Money is just a circumstance until we put our thoughts to it and our beliefs to it. Yeah. So money is simply an amplifier, right? So 
people are like, we all have these beliefs around money. It's like, well, money is evil. People with money are a holes, Mm -hmm. like selfish, greedy. Well, if I don't want to be selfish and greedy, because if you even know yourself, like that was a big thing. It's like, I don't want to be that. Yep. Well, if I have a belief that people with money are that, but I really want to have money and have a business that's really successful, you're not going to go towards it because your identity is going to hold you back here. It's like a math problem. If I believe that people with money are greedy assholes, but I want some money, then do I have to become a greedy asshole? But I'm not a greedy asshole. So I'm not going to get it. (laughs) Right. 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 Yeah. So it's like, well, is it really? No. Money just amplifies who we already are. Mm -hmm. Right. So money is just like, if I'm a kind hearted, loving person, that's just, I'm going to be able to give and contribute in such a higher level. Like look at Oprah. Mm Oprah is a wealthy, wealthy person. Is she a greedy asshole? I don't think she is, but I mean, I'm sure other people might have an opinion about it. It's really deep seated shit that we need to start looking at. And this conversation has been so helpful to, I think, get people really thinking about what's going on in the 95% of the back of their brain so that we can bring it forward to the life we we really want to live. Well, Jen, even if I said to you, if I say the word wealthy to you, what does that word mean for you? Like, what is that? Like, how does that feel in your body when I even say it? Wealthy is a word that like doesn't resonate with me. It's not a word that like I connect with. Wealthy makes me think of some rich white dude wearing like Nantucket red pants and kind of talks like this and has his collar <laughs> popped up. So for me, it's not a word that I really like to use. So you you can see that like, and anybody listening, like there's junk around that word for me. And it's just a word. It's just a word. Yeah. Right. So, and it's like, well, if I really want actually wealth is like having like abundance of everything, sure, money, it's like, I have wealth, like a health and love. And right. Health, right? Time. So the words that we say, it's like, well, if I'm having a reaction to that word, there's, it's tricking me for a reason. I need to fix it. Yeah. Because if I want money and I I'm like, wealth doesn't feel good for me. You know, I need to, I need to challenge that. Mm-hmm. And I need to release it so I can actually move myself. Like we actually have to work from a place of our goal is already done. So what do I think? How do I feel? What do I believe? What do I do from a place of, I already have this. Yeah. Right. Because again, like trying to be this person that doesn't have that already, is not going to get me here. You can't create from the space of not having it. You have to see yourself already having it and create from that space. What would that person be thinking? What would that person be feeling? What would that person be doing? And what result is that version of myself going to get? Yeah. I love it. Right. And a lot of us have a hard time getting there. It's like, I don't yes. know that person. <laughs> well, I think a lot of us have a hard time getting there because we are not even aware of all of the triggers that reside within us. So thank you for all of this oh, my goodness today and all of the fun conversation around this. How can people get in touch with you to follow you, learn more about working with you just to connect with you? Yeah. So you go to my website at calliecroken.com. And if you want to book a call with me, there will be a link actually on my page. So if you want to talk about what's holding you back, what's blocking you, like this is the thing. It's I work so well with say like a coach with Jen that's like gives you all the plans and gets you to where you want to go, right? But when you do this work, that actually is just like a propeller. So it's like okay, I can actually execute everything she's doing. Yeah. Right. When you start freeing yourself from all the stuff that's actually holding you back, it's like I have the plan, I have the strategy. What's wrong with me? Why can't I do it? It's like, there's nothing wrong with you. You just have these strategies that are playing in your mind and they're stopping you from creating it. So we just go in and create new strategies. Like it's not overly hard. It's just, it's not overly easy, but it's simple. I guess if that makes sense. That does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. So you can go to my website and I'll also have a freebie there if anybody wants to download it. Yeah. Fantastic. Kelly, thank you for all of this goodness today. I know that this conversation will resonate with my audience and I hope that it gives them a time to like, I hope they give themselves time to pause, think about all the shit that we unpacked today. And we did it verbally, but like they could do it journaling, right? Like they could do it just by being in themselves. But I encourage you, go get on a call with Kelly and see if she can help you. Because I promise you, when you start clearing out this garbage, your business just explodes. One more little thing, if I have time to say, Jen, is that if, Everybody can just take a look at like, explore where your focus is. Like, what are you, even if you take a day and be like, okay, what have I been focusing on? So just notice what you're focusing on because our brain, like we get what we focus on. Like that's, we get what we focus on and our brain is desired to focus on survival. So what we actually don't want, 
right? So just watch yourself and be like, okay, how can I even shift that around and actually turn it into, okay, no, I'm actually going to focus on what I want because we always get what we focus on, Mm -hmm. right? And that's why I actually like race car drivers, if they're teaching you to drive, they're in the passenger seat and they'll, they'll actually put the car into a spin and we'll just go towards the wall. Right. Like we're, so it's like, we're going exactly where we don't want to go. Okay. So the instructor will actually take your head and move forward and keep it on the track. So they have to train you to stay where you want to go instead of automatically looking at where you don't want to go. Brilliant. Right. So we have to do the same thing for ourselves. So we want to take that focus, be like, refocus myself on what I want, refocus on what I want and train our mind to start focusing on actually what we do want. And what we want is probably more time, more money, more energy, more freedom. And what we tell ourselves is every day is I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough freedom. And focus so on the lack of it. Yeah. We focus on the lack. So yes, that's a great gem to leave everybody with today. Thank you so much. This was super oh, fun. Thank you for having me. It was awesome. It was really fun. Thanks, Kelly. 